Prime. Set in ancient feudal Japan, the story of Shogun mostly revolves around warlords and samurais. But there aren't many important female characters in the show, probably because women back in those times were most limited to being wives, mothers, concubines, or servants. But the show has given importance to one special woman named Lady Toda Mariko, played brilliantly by Anna Sawai. Apart from being a wife and a mother, Mariko is the only woman in the show seen to have a key role outside the household. Her role as Yoshi Toronaga's translator in order to propagate a free-flowing conversation with John Blackthorne not just allows her to retain her importance to the powerful lord, but also makes her privy to have the first scoop on what Toronaga is planning. Mariko is seen to be a very calm and composed person who doesn't talk much about herself at first, but eventually it's revealed that she comes from a high-ranking family with a controversial past and married Toda Hirokatsu, popularly known as Buntaro, who works for Lord Toronaga. Together, they also have a son named Ruji. Apart from that, Mariko is a devoted Catholic with a good grip on the English language, which comes from the influence of Jesuit priests living in Japan because of their trade connections with Catholic Spain and Portugal. Like almost every character in Shogun, Mariko's character is also inspired from a real-life person named Akechi Tama, also known as Hosagawa Gracia. But her story is much more tragic than Mariko's in Shogun, so without wasting much time, let's find out who Hosagawa Gracia really was. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Should not be seen together. From this day forward, the only words we share will be from others' lips. Who is Akechi Tama? Akechi Tama was the last of the famous Akechi clan and in the short span of her life, Akechi became Japan's symbol of resilience for her great sacrifice. Known as Tamako in her early life, Akechi was born during the Sengoku period of Japan in 1563, which was a time of intense social upheaval and civil war in all of Japan amongst all the reigning daimyos. The situation was so dire that even the collective power from the Emperor of Japan and the Ashikaga shogunate were struggling to keep the warlords in check, only to be reduced as mere puppets in their hands. Now, this was also the era which saw the arrival of the Catholics and the Portuguese in Japan, preaching Christianity to the unstable lords and people of the region. Many daimyos embraced Christianity with the sole purpose of gaining access to the advanced weapons, gunpowder, and many other new European means of warfare which were unknown to the Japanese. Omura Sumitada was the first known daimyo in Japan to convert to Catholicism, following which, in 1562, he started a harsh campaign against local Buddhists, destroying their temples and raising down Shinto shrines. This act showed strong religious devotion or fanaticism, which made Japanese people suspicious of the new religion. Despite the emperor's orders to ban Christianity, Akechi Tama was one of the rare few upper-class women during that time in Japan to convert to Catholicism and remain steadfast in her faith. Now, what motivated her conversion to Christianity? For that, we must take note of the controversial clan she comes from. Born to Akechi Mitsuhide and Sumaki Hiroko, Tamako was their third daughter, who was said to be intelligent, kind, and melancholic, but with a penchant to learn new things. Akechi Mitsuhide was a samurai general in Japan who served under Oda Nobunaga, a powerful daimyo who's famed for being the first unifier of Japan. Although not much is known about Akechi Tama's life as a child, through history, we know that after the siege of Mount Hai, her father Mitsuhide received a lot of land from Oda Nobunaga and built a fortress called the Sakamoto Castle. Growing up in a castle, Tama enjoyed the privileges of being a noble Japanese woman and was treated no less than a princess under her father's care. At 16, she was married off to Hosokawa Tadayoki, a samurai leader of the Hosokawa clan, and together they had three sons and two daughters, unlike Toda Mariko from Shogun, who only has one son with Buntaro. Now, the Akechi clan was famous under Mitsuhide, but both for the right and the wrong reasons. Being part of the Akechi clan gave Tamako quite a reputation that changed her life over time. At first, she was seen as a princess-like figure because her father was gaining favor with a pretty strong daimyo. But later, she was dropped down to the status of a traitor after her father's controversial decisions. This situation is first hinted at in the show when we witness Mariko almost confessing to John Blackthorne in episode 4 of Shogun about her fall from grace, showing a direct connection between Tamako and Mariko. Akechi Tama's family backstory is quite the same as Toda Mariko. So, like in show, Mariko speaks of her father. Akechi Jinsai's betrayal out of love for the realm of Japan and its people, it's possible that Akechi Tama's father, Akechi Mitsuhide, had the same agenda, given that Oda Nobunaga, who is the possible inspiration behind the Kuroda Sama Mariko speaks of, was no less than a tyrant. 
Even though Nobunaga is considered as one of the first great unifiers of Japan, he was infamous for his high temper and brutal methods. His ambitions were completely vain and self-motivated, causing him to indiscriminately kill anyone that questioned his rule. In 1582, Tamako's father, Mitsuhide, became involved in a chaotic series of events. Initially, Nobunaga asked him to assist Hashiba Hideyoshi's campaign against the Mori clan, but instead, Mitsuhide gathered an impressive force of 13,000 brave soldiers, defying Nobunaga's commands. As they marched toward the Honoji Temple, Mitsuhide's army surrounded it and set it ablaze in a moment of intense emotion or possibly even madness. Amidst the raging flames, Mitsuhide's sword slashed anyone in his path, leaving behind a scene of turmoil with the once powerful and untouchable Oda Nobunaga subdued. After being defeated and betrayed by his most trusted general, Nobunaga was forced to perform the ritual suicide of seppuku, choosing to end his life with his own blade in order to protect his honor. Following Oda Nobunaga's death, his son Oda Nobutada tried to escape but was surrounded and killed at Nijo Castle. Naturally, Mitsuhide's betrayal shocked the entire realm, so he moved swiftly to consolidate his power. Without wasting time, he looted Azuchi Castle in order to reward his soldiers and keep their loyalty. Mitsuhide then tried to declare himself as the Shogun, but just 13 days later, he faced Toyotomi Hideyoshi at the Battle of Yamazaki. It was Hideyoshi who inspired the character of the Taiko we briefly saw in Shogun while he was on his deathbed. Anyways, Mitsuhide had hoped that Hideyoshi would be busy fighting the Mori clan, which wouldn't allow him to respond to the Oda clan's crisis. However, when Hideyoshi learned of Nobunaga's assassination, he quickly signed a peace treaty with the Mori and joined forces with the real-life Yoshi Toronaga, Tokugawa Ieyasu, to avenge Nobunaga. Within a span of four days, Hideyoshi quickly moved his army to Setsu and caught Mitsuhide by surprise. Meanwhile, Mitsuhide struggled to gather support for his cause, and his army decreased to 10,000 men. In contrast, Hideyoshi gained the loyalty of former Oda retainers, such as Niwa Nagahide and Ikeda Tsuneyoki, boosting his forces to 20,000 men. Finally, on July 2, 1582, the Battle of Yamazaki took place, where Mitsuhide's attempts to form alliances failed leading to his defeat. He fled the battle but was later killed by bandits. This entire event tarnished Mitsuhide's reputation, leading his entire family to be executed. Like Mariko, only Akechi Tama was spared due to her marriage to Hosokawa Tadayoki, but this still labeled her as the child of a dishonored traitor. Akechi Tama's Baptism into Hosokawa, Gracia After her clan was wiped out, Akechi Tama's husband, Hosokawa Tadayoki, chose not to divorce her but instead sent her into exile. Now, on a side note, Tamako and her husband Tadayuki, who's the historical basis for Toda Buntaro in Shogun, initially had a peaceful marriage. However, things took a turn when the Akechi clan was labeled as traitors. Tadayuki sent his wife to the secluded hamlet of Midono in the Tango Peninsula, where she remained hidden until 1584. Toyotomi Hideyoshi then requested Tadayuki to bring Tamako to the Hosokawa mansion in Osaka, where she was again kept confined. Now, Tadayuki was worried about Hideyoshi fearing any advances towards his wife from the daimyo, who was known for his reputation as a womanizer. But when Tamako was summoned to meet Hideyoshi, a dagger slipped from her as she bowed, signaling her discomfort. So Hideyoshi, understanding this subtle gesture, refrained from extending any further invitations. However, this incident, ironically, led Tadayoki to impose strict confinement on his wife once again, making Tamako a prisoner in the mansion. Despite her captivity, Tamako found solace in the story shared by her maid, who came from a Catholic family and soon she became intrigued by the foreign religion and their way of life. So, in 1587, Tamako managed to sneak out of the Osaka mansion for the first time and visit the Osaka church. However, a few months later, Hideyoshi banned Christian missionaries from Kyushu and issued a proclamation against Christianity in Japan. Upon hearing this news, Tamako was determined to be baptized immediately. Despite being held captive, her maid baptized her, giving her the Christian name Gracia. All of this happened while her husband Tadayoki was away. Upon his return, he was furious and asked her to renounce her faith, which Tamako adamantly refused to do. This disagreement further caused tension and friction in their marriage, leading them to share a bitter relationship. This dynamic seems to have inspired the portrayal of Buntaro and Mariko's strained relationship in the show, as their interactions indicate discomfort and a lack of connection especially with Mariko appearing cold, distant, and uninterested, while Buntaro appears to be aggressive, dominant, and abusive. Since her very introduction in the show, we've seen Mariko find her solace in the bosom of Catholicism and God, while remaining indifferent to all the atrocities Buntaro put her through. The real Mariko also did the same, because during her time of confinement, 
Tomiko studied Latin and Portuguese and spent her days reading a spiritual guidebook named The Imitation of Christ by Thomas Akempis. As Hosokawa Gracia, she was deeply fascinated by the Christian way of life and fully embraced her new religion. Hosokawa Gracia's role in the ultimate unification of Japan and the formation of the Tokugawa Shogunate. In 1595, Gracia was again at the face of imminent danger when her husband Tadayoki, who was close to Toyotomi Hidetsugu, the nephew and then heir of Toyotomi Hideyoshi, found himself in a precarious situation. Despite Hidetsugu being Hideyoshi's closest male relative, he was accused of grave offenses and allegedly planning a coup against his uncle. So, after the birth of Hideyoshi's son, Hidetsugu was ordered to commit seppuku and his entire family, including his children, had a similar fate on Hideyoshi's orders. Due to Tadayoki's association with Hidetsugu, he feared being targeted next. So, in a desperate attempt to protect his honor, Tadayoki instructed his wife to end her own life if he faced execution. This is when Gracia sought counsel from Catholic priests regarding this grim ritual, only to learn that suicide was considered a severe sin in Christianity. Naturally, Gracia grappled with a difficult decision, torn between upholding Japanese customs and risking eternal damnation or living in disgrace but in accordance with her religious beliefs. Fortunately, the danger eventually subsided after her husband was spared from being accused of treason in that year. Now, just like we saw in the initial season of Shogun, where the Taiko left behind a young heir on his deathbed, whose rule would be protected by a council of five regents till he comes of age. Similarly, in 1598, Toyotomi Hideyoshi passed away, leaving his five-year-old son Toyotomi Hideyori as his heir. To ensure a smooth succession when his son comes of age, Hideyoshi established a council of five elders. However, a lot of feudal drama and power struggle began among the council members after Hideyoshi's death, which led to the formation of two rival factions with Tokugawa Ieyasu in the east and Ishida Mitsunari in the west. Now, this rivalry is exactly where Shogun begins, as the council is seen siding with Lord Ishido, a character based on Ishida Mitsunari. Over the next two years, the real-life Toronaga, Tokugawa Ieyasu, a powerful warlord, forged alliances with various daimyos, especially those who were not exactly very fond of the Hideyoshi clan. Later, with the death of the oldest and most respected council member, Maeda Toshie, in 1599, Tokugawa moved to consolidate his power in the east by fraternizing with enemies of the Hideyoshi clan. This action angered the three remaining council elders, leading to preparations for war on all sides. Among Hideyoshi's top generals were Keito Kiyomasa, the lord of Kumamoto, and Fukushima Masanori, the lord of Hiroshima, who had valiantly served during the Japanese invasion of Korea. However, upon returning home, they found the Toyotomi clan in complete disarray under Ishida Mitsunari's leadership, leading them to align with the ambitious Tokugawa. Sadly, Toyotomi Hideyoshi ruthlessly executed most of his male family members after his son's birth, leaving the clan without a strong leader, thus severely weakening the Toyotomi regime. In 1600, Gracia's husband, Tadayoki, aligned himself with Tokugawa Ieyasu, and together they departed from Osaka, heading eastward with a substantial army. Meanwhile, Ishida swiftly took control of Osaka Castle where the families of many generals loyal to Hideyoshi lived. Ishida's strategy involved holding these family members hostage to pressurize the opposing generals into either joining forces with him or refraining from launching attacks against him. This is also an instance we saw in the show, as in Episode 6, Lord Ishido indirectly takes all the regents hostage under Lady Ochiba's influence and forces them to either vote for Todonaga's execution or face their end. Anyways, in the same year, after taking control of Osaka, Ishida Mitsunari ordered Tadayoki to submit his wife as his hostage. But when Gracia refused, Ishida decided to forcefully take her in and sent his forces to kidnap Gracia as his hostage. However, the family retainer Ogasawara Shosai intervened by ending her life to spare her the humiliation of capture and then committing seppuku himself after setting the mansion ablaze, resulting in both their deaths amid the flames. The public outcry following Gracia's tragic death was immense leading Ishida to abandon his plans. Most of Ishida's powerful allies were Catholic, and after knowing that he drove a pious Catholic woman to her death, they viewed Ishida as a monster, siding with Tokugawa at the very last moment. This completely changed the course of the battle, as when both the factions fought in the Battle of Sekigahara, Ishida Mitsunari was defeated by Tokugawa Ieyasu's forces, thus marking the end of the Sengoku period in Japan. It's safe to say that even if she was only 37 years old, Osakawa Gracia was the most important martyr for this battle because it labeled Ishida as a hated villain and allowed Tokugawa to use her death as a tool to gain more allies till the very end. Without Gracia's death, the probability behind the formation of the Tokugawa shogunate reigning on Japan for the next 200 years would have been impossible. 
Now, on a side note, it should be noted that while many Japanese accounts attribute the decision to kill Gracia to her own orders, these accounts were written years after the event. The original Jesuit account, written shortly after Gracia's death, offered a completely different perspective. According to this version, Tadayoki had instructed his household attendants to prioritize Gracia's honor above all else, even if it required sacrificing her life in dire circumstances. So, the servants perceived the attempted kidnapping as a threat to her honor and acted accordingly based on Tadayoki's command, taking Gracia's life. Osakawa Gracia's relevance to Toda Mariko Now, I know Shogun mainly focuses on Mariko and John Blackthorne's chemistry in the shadow of her being John's translator, but in reality, William Adams, the real-life inspiration for John Blackthorne, never even met Osakawa Gracia. In fact, the woman met her end even before William set foot in Japan. In the book that inspired both the shows, Gracia's character was used by James Clavell to give life to Mariko. Right from Mariko's melancholic nature to her devotion to God, a sense of duty as a Japanese woman and, of course, her hold over Latin and English, everything are nuances picked from Hosogawa Gracia's nature. Although Gracia found peace within religion, Mariko had the privilege of the idea of freedom that she felt with John Blackthorne's presence. Even though her marriage to Buntaro was a forced affair, she refused to be submissive and had her own ways to retain her importance. Plus, in episode 6, we saw how Mariko realized that her life had a purpose, left behind by her father, which gave her the much-needed motivation to become someone other than a wife or a mother. Even if Hosokawa's death was the ultimate catalyst which left an impact on the political scenario of her time, ending the Sengoku period and unifying Japan. We can only hope our Mariko will have a much better fate, even if James Clavell's novel ends her character with a classic sacrifice. If you take note of the elements of Mariko's story in Shogun from the book, they seem to follow Gracia's story quite closely, although there are stark differences, such as the manner of their deaths. While in the book, Mariko threatens to commit suicide, in case she's not allowed to leave Osaka Castle and is then killed in a raid on a compound. Her death still serves as a similar cataclysmic purpose to her threatened suicide, enraging the other hostages and swaying allies towards Todonaga. However, fundamentally speaking, the two characters, Mariko and Gracia, do not have anything in common. But I really wonder if FX's Shogun will take a similar approach to Mariko's character, given that it's completely followed the course of the book as of now. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comment box below. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone.